cigarette pack, keys, and a lighter. Whoop, that's a penis. Hey, no worries, brother. Anytime. All right, all right. So let's do this. Trouble in the building. Hey. Man, we in trouble, bro. That's that's. I yeah, mean, you, you, it, it, it sounds. It looks as though that you cause a lot of trouble everywhere you go, my man. What? Um, let's let's start from the beginning, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let everybody know where you're from, bro. All right. Well, I'm trouble, as you can see. Uh, I'm from Canada on the west coast. There, Vancouver Island. Represent. What's up? And I've uh, been a truck driver for 22 years almost. Oh so, my God, 22 years. Yeah. Bro, I, I was, I'm glad you said 22 years because I was about to say only a new truck driver did, did, did let the thing happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I mean, it's, it's a thing, right? Like, I, if we want to talk about what happened there, I went in. Well, no, not yet, um, not, not, yet not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, let's, okay. Let's, okay. Uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, do a little background check. <laughs> uh, okay. Twenty two years in the game, bro. So you started in two thousand. So you, so I'm going to consider you a yeah, millen- well, a millennial driver. So you started in two thousand. When uh, what what was you doing before trucking, and why did you get in it? Well, I mean, I did everything from deep sea commercial fishing, scuba diving, working on the oil rigs, all that jazz. Uh, I jumped in and out of trucking, going back to those things every now and then. But I mean, trucking's where the heart's at. So yeah, it's, it's just all about freedom for me. Just driving everywhere, making everybody happy. All right. You know, being a bed bugger, like, at the end of the day, like, when you move, it's one of the most stressful times you can have outside of an ambulance or an airplane. So I like to think of my job as really customer service based as well, right? Yeah. I've got all your stuff, like your whole world in the back of my truck. So if I don't get there on time, you know, Aunt Mayor, you know, Uncle Larry is going to piss they don't have the coffee table, but, you know... I've got all your mementos too, right? So the uh, stuff happened on the highway in my years where, you know, people's lives get ruined. And uh, I'm going to go, I promised myself I was never going to be one of those guys. All right. All right. So, bro, 22 years in the game, but uh, you're you're from Canada. Uh, your phone puts you in yep. Bristol, Columbia, right? British Columbia, yeah. yeah. British Columbia. It's one of our, it's the province all the way to the left. It's uh, basically Hollywood North. All right. So, what is the what is the difference of getting your CDL up in Canada versus getting them here in the states? Do you guys are you guys up under the same rules and regulations as we are as as far as getting your license go? Well, I, yes and no. Like, it changed really dramatically in the last, uh, not even a year, it's changed. Uh, it used to be, you pay your $15, you do your written, and it's where you can drive with a fully licensed uh, driver in their truck on their insurance and all that jazz. So you can gain experience that way, like, on the road. You can't drive by yourself at all. Like, you know. And then... um you go to a school or, or you just go to a school and you pay for their truck rental and their time. And they teach you everything from, you know, the, there's, there's like, I don't know. It's been a long time. <laughs> everything, but, uh, everything like you know, you, coupling, air brakes, uh, double. Yeah. Strippers. Your full walk around for your pre-trip safety. You got to be able to do that in like under 50 minutes and not miss a thing. Otherwise that's an automatic fail. And, um, yeah, then they, they teach you how to drive and it's, it's when I did it, um, if you did your test on a standard, you had an unrestricted license where you could drive standard or automatic. But if you did your test on an automatic, then you weren't allowed to drive a standard. Oh, okay. So you guys basically got the same as we do up there, but look like the test out is kind of 
it's kind of different. Did you? Yeah. Well, did you? Here's go- the thing. It it all changed months ago. Now, now it's like thirty thousand dollars to get your CDL, depending on what province you're in. Wait, wait, Anywhere from wait, twenty wait, to $30,000. Whoa, 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 bro, whoa. How much? Yeah. Yeah, that was my reaction, too. It's anywhere between twenty and $30,000. Two twenty k and three thirty k for your CDL? Yeah, bro. Up in Canada? Yeah. Yes, sir. Up it, up it. Yeah, they've made it an accredited course at a university now, where you don't even get your learner's license until you pay that twenty k, and then you have to do like twenty eight or thirty something hours that I don't know what it is exactly in class before you even touch a truck. Wow. Yeah. Okay, guys, y'all y'all heard that. Yeah, my, I'm gonna give man, you a minute. I'm gonna give you a minute to process yeah, that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Di- digest that one for you. You guys over here complaining about how much schools here in the states is. Imagine being up in Canada, going to school, paying thirty to. I mean, paying twenty to thirty k, and you gotta pay that before yep. you even get your CLP. Uh huh. That's to get your CLP. Oh my God, that is, and you say right? that, and you say that was changed within the last couple of months, uh, not a couple even a year, of, uh, last couple, uh, last year. Yeah, yeah, that that popped out before or around January, I think, or either December, January. I can't remember that changed. Bro, do that. All includes- I know is I was telling all my friends who wanted to get in it to get their stuff before that happened, because otherwise they'll have to rely on a company and be indentured to them. For at least three years, bro. Do that. That's include, what they're going for. Do that include your your doubles, triples, and hazmat? Uh, oh yeah, that that's that's everything to get your class one. So like in Canada, it's a bit different. Hazmat that that just comes from whatever company you're running. So say you're in the oil field and you're hauling materials, the company will give you your uh, your hazmat ticket. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So it's not. This, it's this not is basically an just like your air brakes. No, it's not an endorsement uh, unless you're running cross border. Oh, okay. which I mean, most of most of that just goes for American drivers anyway. Um, unless you're taking crude down from Canada to the states. Now you you of course you run cross border because I'm assuming the incident that uh, that happened at that flying J is over in the states, right? Yeah, that was at Thousand Palms. Okay. In California. Okay. So so you do run cross border. How how is it how is it for you guys coming across uh from Canada to the United States? And then is it any difference from you going back across to Canada? It I the what I've noticed, especially with all the vaccination card stuff now. It is a lot harder coming down into the States as a Canadian driver than it is going back into Canada. I mean, I'm pretty good with my paperwork all the time. You know, all my T's are crossed, my I's are dotted. You know, like, I, I don't have any red marks on on my logs. I make sure that I'm always good. And uh, the, the only time I've had a hard time coming down was, uh, I guess, a couple times trying to get over the Ambassador Bridge into the States. I got x-rayed a few times, but I think Buddy was just having a bad day. Other than that, coming back into Canada, as long as your paperwork's all in order, you pay the fee, you show them your ACE manifest, and carry on. Because you got to do the custom stuff after you get into Canada, whereas uh, at the border, they do the custom stuff right there coming into the States. Wow, okay. So what about now driving up in Canada, uh, truck driving in Canada, um, how how is it how is it truck driving up in Canada? Do you guys got way stations and and stuff like that up uh, up up there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We we got way stations all over the place. Um, we got a lot less roads than you guys have, and we got a lot longer distances between major cities. So our logs are a bit different too, because I'm allowed to drive for thirteen hours in Canada. I got to take a, a break, obviously. Um, but I'm allowed 13 hours on, on driving and eight hours off before I can drive again. 
Okay, so and, it's, um, so it's kind of different. It, it's kind of different. They 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 gave you two. Well, let me see. We drive eleven hours here. All right. Yeah. And we're off for 10 hours. But basically, I guess what they did up in Canada was just take off two hours off the off the break time and just give that to you on your drive time. Yeah. Oh, and it's because, you know, there's some places where you can drive for five hours and not see a pump. You know what I mean? So right. they want to make sure that you at least get somewhere that's safe. And, uh, you know, props to them for giving us a change in that because we, we've got like two major roads to go across the country. That's it. All you know right. what I mean? So, all right. So, plus, we got like some pretty brutal weather up there. So, all right. So let's let's get into it, man. Because I I want to I want to come to uh come to your hours of service because you know one of the main reasons why you didn't move was because you was out of hours and you wasn't uh able to move. So my segue question yeah. would be would would be on part of part of that. So. All right, so you're you're over at the pilot. You what is it, the pilot or the flying J? It was a it was a pilot flying J. They're owned by the same company now, I think. All right, so you over in you over in pilot over in where now? Thousand Palms. All right, so thousand California. Thousand Palms, California. So was you was you loaded or unloaded? I was on my way unloading. Uh, as a Canadian driver, I'm not allowed to do interstate. So I pick up multiple loads in Canada and then bring them down and do multiple drop-offs if I have space in the trailer, right? Because you don't want dead space on a trip. So I was on my way unloading, and I had just unloaded outside Thousand Palms, and I had gone back to the agent. They're literally across the street from that fuel station. And, uh, I was, I was, there's no showers or amenities at the agent. So I pulled up in there and there's ample space everywhere. And I got my food and my shower and, you know, a couple drinks. Now you, and, now uh, you posted I, was, up. I was out of hours by the time. So you posted up at, uh, you, you posted up at the pilot, you, you said, let me go ahead and uh, get my shower in, get something to eat, grab a couple of uh, uh, White Claws. We we don't consider that alcoholic beverage. But anyway. Right. <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't drinking to get so, pissed. I just but, wanted a sip. Well, let me ask you this, bro. How the hell did you get drunk off of a couple of cans of White Claws, man? White Claws? Well, here's the thing. I wasn't. I wasn't drunk, okay. but I was over the limit. Like that was the biggest thing. It was like, I could go into personal conveyance and move if I had somewhere to go. That wasn't the issue. The issue was, is I had too many drinks to legally get behind the wheel of a semi. White claws, and I was trying though? to explain that to the guy. Wait, hey man, there's still what? Six, seven percent. Oh, okay. So I had uh, four. Oh, you say you had four of them. So what? Say six, twelve, twenty. Eight, well, yeah. Okay. All right. I I I, I yeah. give you that. I give you that. Twenty uh twenty four ounces. Okay. I give you that. All right. Yeah. So thank you. So the thing. So the thing was, you 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 parked. You what what was it like? You you parked at a at a, at a spot that you wasn't supposed to park or. What was it between no, you, no, it you was, and the you you and the uh, manager? Well, that's the thing, right? Like there was three dumpsters. They were all empty. They were all at the back. I'd never been to that one before. I didn't even know that you had to pay for the spot. Honestly, like usually you don't, or if you have to pay for the spots, like the TA in, in uh, right by LA there, um, or in Ontario, California. If you uh, if you spend twenty five dollars in the store and you show a receipt, then you get out of there for free without having to pay for parking. So I mean that was what I was under the, the suspicion that it was just one of those free ones. Like there was no oh. pay parking signs or anything. Anyway, okay, it wasn't no, it, it wasn't no, it wasn't so, no, sign, it wasn't no marker, wasn't no, you know, reserve that said no. in the front. You just no, it was just okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, I was open spot, right? So there's three dumpsters in the back. They're all empty. 
You know, there's... After these messages, we'll be right back.